Hey guys, I wanted to give you a little preview today of something we've been working on. It's the Sleep HQ API. We've been saying for a while that we would make this available uh, to publicly to the Sleep HQ Pro community, and we're almost ready to do that. So uh, I've got a few little pieces I still need to polish up on it. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have an early access beta preview for a few developer uh, people in the community so they can get in, test it out, and make sure that everything's solid. And then we're going to roll it out to all of the Pro Sleep HQ members. Uh, so what I thought I would do today was just give you a little uh, demo of what's coming and some of the things that you're going to be able to do with the Sleep HQ API. So when I click on account settings down the bottom here, we've got this new API keys section and I can click add API key like that. And now it's giving me this new API key. So it's giving me a client ID and a client secret. We've also got this uh, link here to the docs. So when I click that one, it's going to open up the API documentation. Uh, so this is basically every endpoint that's available for the API, along with the docs on what the parameters are for each of those endpoints, and then what the return objects are going to be. So what I can do, what's really cool with this documentation though, is it's interactive. So I can actually uh, execute these API endpoints directly through the browser to see uh, what sort of responses I get and uh, to test them out and make sure that everything's working so that I can go and implement it in my own application. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to take the client ID and secret that we just generated over here and we've got this authorize button up the top. So when I click authorize, I've got this on request body and I'm going to stick in my client ID and the secret that we generated like that. I'm going to say all scope. So I can choose how I want to scope this key that I'm using to read, write, or delete access. So I'm going to say for all of them and authorize. So what that's now done behind the scenes is it's taken that uh, client ID and client secret, hit the token endpoint, and now we've got back a secure token that we can use to authenticate our API requests. So that's the same process that you would do in your application uh, to authenticate your requests as well. Once I've done that, I can now use any of these API endpoints. So a really simple example is this me endpoint, which gives you information about the current user. So let's do that now. When you click on an endpoint, it expands it out to give you the full documentation on it. And we've got this try it out button. So when I hit execute, it's gonna actually run uh, that API endpoint. So it's given me the curl request that was generated. And you can see in there that there's this header with the bearer token. So this is the token that was generated when we authenticated up the top of the page a minute ago that automatically got included in this request. So I could literally cut and paste that into a terminal uh, and run this same request and get the same response. And then here's the response that I got. So this is the real live response about the user that I'm logged in with uh, or the user that owns that API key that we're using. So it's giving me the email address and uh, team IDs and names and all that sort of stuff. So that's just a really simple example of showing you how you can use the kind of interactive API endpoints. Um, once you're in there and you're doing that, the really interesting stuff is then going to be actually interacting with the data. So uh, first up, you can create imports, uh, which is where you're going to be importing data. So this is basically the functionality to build your own uh, custom magic uploader. So if, you're, if you've been working on that and you've been playing around with getting your data in and you've been using like a you know, headless browser or something to get the files into SleepHQ, you can now automate that full process. So you can go down to this import section and it's going to explain to you exactly how to create an import object and then you can attach files to that object and then process the files. And that's essentially what the Magic Uploader does. So you can now build that full functionality completely from scratch using the API. Once you have data in there, you can then also interact with the data itself. So if I go to, for example, this machines endpoint, um, I can query for all of the machines that I have in the system. So that's my CPAP machine, uh, any O2 rings you might have, anything like that. And then I can view the data directly from those devices. So let me just quickly show you how that works. Uh, first up, I need to know my team ID. So I can get that from the me endpoint or I can also get it from the Teams endpoint here. So when I run this one, 
it's going to give me back an array of all the teams that I'm associated with. So a team on Sleep HQ is effectively like an account. Uh, we call it a team behind the scenes, but we generally refer to them as accounts in the UI. Uh, and you may you may well have multiple accounts that you're associated with because you might have been invited into other people's accounts. Uh, so most people will only have a single account. And so that's what's happened here. I've run this endpoint. I've got back an array with just a single uh, data data point in there, which is my main account. So it's called Adam's account, and I can see the ID is ID 27. So once I've got that ID, now what I can do is go to the machines endpoint, and I can use my team ID to query for all of the machines that are in my account. So I'm gonna throw the team ID in here. Uh, you've got your pagination options in there as well, and I'm gonna execute this request. So now I can see that this is the CPAP machine that's actually in my account. I've got the name of it, the serial number, all the details about the machine. The thing that's, uh, that I need from here before I can go any further is the machine ID. So all, obviously all CPAP machines in SleepHQ will have their own unique identifier or ID number. This one here is ID 35. So I'm gonna grab that ID. Now, machine dates is the object that represents the data for a given date from a CPAP machine. So uh, this is where you can query for things like your average AHI or pressure or um, you know, things like that, that uh, for all the machine settings also uh, for a given date. So once I've got my machine ID, I can go down to here, I can use this get endpoint to list the machine dates. So I can just get a full array of all of the machine dates for this uh, machine ID number 35. So let's do that now. Execute, and now we've got this array back, which it's quite big because there's a lot of data in there. Uh, but each individual machine date is gonna look sort of like this uh, down to about here is one machine date. So you can see there's a whole bunch of summary information that you can get. So you know things like your average pressure, min, max, uh, leak rates, uh, it's also going to show you all of the machine settings that you had on that particular date. So if your machine settings were changing over time, you can be querying the, the API to get your machine settings on a given date. Uh, and then you can also be using this, uh, the summary data that's coming out here in your own analysis. So this is the point at which you could potentially feed this data into wherever you want it to go. Uh, you know, it might start with like a Google uh, a Google Doc with some calculations in there or like a Google Sheet. Um, you could run it into some statistical analysis programs. Anywhere, anywhere you want to take that data so that you can run some sort of analysis on there that, uh, that you want to do. Um, so they are the main things that we're starting out with with the API. The ability to import data so people can build their own magic uploaders. Uh, and then also the ability to interact with the high level summary data. As we get going, as people have more use cases and things that they want to be able to do with the API, we're going to keep building this out and adding more endpoints and making it more full featured. Um, so as people are starting to use it, if there are things that you want to be able to do and we don't yet have an endpoint to give you the data that you want, then make sure you're letting us know because this, this is going to be a work in progress. But this is the V1 API endpoints. Uh, you can see that's, that's why everything is kind of prefixed with V1 in here as well. But we'll be adding to that over time as we go. Um, it will probably stay as V1 if we're just adding extra endpoints because it's not going to break any integrations that people make. The only time when we would update the version on the API is if we were making breaking changes to it that were not going to be backwards compatible. So, uh, and then that way, if we are doing that, you your application that you've built can continue to use the V1 API, um, but we will then you know, roll out like a V2 API for anyone who wants those new features that we're going to uh, be potentially you know, not backwards compatible for whatever reason. Uh, so there you have it. That's a kind of very quick overview uh, of the API itself and some of the things that you're going to be able to do with it. But really, what we want to do here is throw this one over to the community and see what you guys can do because that's the whole point of having these kind of APIs so that we can open up the data that's in your account and then you can start to build on top of it and you know take it wherever you want to take it. So I'm really excited to kind of see where, where this goes. Um, it's, I think, just the first step in, in a process, but I'm really excited to get it out there. So uh, anyway, let me know what you think, guys, and hopefully we'll have it in your hands very soon. All right, I'll talk to you soon.